much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Uh, uh, happy to uh, participate here. Uh, very warm uh, namaste and welcome to everyone. I hope all of you are doing very well during this uh, pandemic. Dr. Sharma asked me to talk about Duan syndrome today. Uh, in the limited time, I'll talk about how to manage the isotropic, exotropic Duan, overshoot, and Duan minus a new entity. That are my objectives. Uh, if you see the patients of Duan syndrome, type one is the most common. But in practical uh, terms, what is important is how many of them are orthotropic, isotropic, and exotropic. This is more important than uh, really uh, looking at type one or type two. In addition, for me, the most important factor when you really do a surgery, these are four cluster of things. One is the type of duan, ET, XT, ortho, or do they have vertical? Obviously, the amount of deviation as strabismologist for all of us, that's the most important. The next cluster, I would say unilateral and bilateral. Type matters, uh, probably we can discuss about it uh, in the discussion. And the associated thing, which will not see in any of the other incompetent strabismus, that is co-contraction, retraction, overshoot, AHP, and sometimes bands. This makes uh, a Duan syndrome a little bit complicated. So uh, we need to have a grading of these other factors. For example, grading of retraction by this, uh, you know, measurements, a simple measurement can be helpful in measuring the retraction and also how much the patient has overshoot. Simple cam camera can really help you to uh, quantify how much, like amount of deviation you use a prism test, even the retraction can be really measured. There are many patients with orthotropic Duan syndrome. We don't do anything, but it's good to know that they have a good accommodation, but have poor convergence and stereopsis is noted to be poor in many of these patients. We don't do anything surgically for them, but these are the things we need to know in uh, orthotropic Duan syndrome. There are subset of patients where there is accommodative component, especially in isotropic Duan syndrome where a pair of glasses can really correct even the abnormal head posture and the primary position deviation. This is a very small subset, but we need to be aware of that. Coming to the esotropic duan, you can see here, uh, this patient on the panel A, you can see abnormal head posture, very large esotropia and uh, abduction limitation maybe plus one or plus two retraction. We did medial rectus recession and superior rectus transposition. That's the new thing in uh, Duan. Not a new thing. I think it's almost a decade old now. Many of us have a lot of experience with this. So that's been done in uh, these uh, two patients. And uh, additionally, you can see advantage here is correction of abnormal head posture, correction of primary position deviation, and if you see in this chart, head-to-head -head comparison between the medial rectus recession and uh, abduction at the SRT, that is the monorectus transposition, there is a significant improvement in abduction, which most of our patients ask for. How much it will improve? How much it will improve? My standard answer for them using all this uh, evidence is around, we can improve by one or 1.5 units, maximum by two units. That's if, uh, if on a scale of minus four, we can improve on an average by minus two. That's the 50% improvement we can uh, counsel these patients. What about bilateral? Bilateral as well, you know, all of us know that uh, the medial lectus is almost always tight. It, uh, it amounts to very small group of Duan syndrome, five to 10%. Here we do a bilateral medial rectus recession. This is good. This really gives a good correction. Only thing in our experience is that we have done a little bit more than what we do for uh, the standard infantile isotropia. But one should be very, very careful in a tight muscle where we cannot go really, really too much. Even a 0.5 can really make a difference when you are touching media like this. And off late, uh, we have been doing, uh, this is just accepted in Japos, we are doing bilateral medial rectus recession and 
bilateral superior rectus transposition in cases of bilateral esotopic Duane syndrome, which you can see improves the abduction significantly in this uh, subset of patients. So that's uh, an option for esotopic. When it comes to exotopia, I think in Asia, it's highly relevant. Exotopic Duane syndrome is much, uh, I wouldn't say that it's uh, much more common than esotopia, but it's commoner in Asia. The exotopic is very common compared to Western countries. So in this series, we had a large number of patients with uh, exotopia. Uh, this again, we published a series of 78 patients of exotopic Duane and their surgical correction. If you can see in this busy table, what has been done? 48 patients of the patient, we could achieve the correction just with unilateral lateral accuracy session. 25 patients needed bilateral lateral accuracy. It can be symmetrical or asymmetrical. Unilateral when there is a, you know, associated significant retraction or overshoot, add Y splitting. And sometimes we need to do uh, bilateral lateral lectures recession with ipsilateral Y splitting. These are some of the things what we have, but there are some other things in extreme cases of overshoot and retraction, we might have to do a differential recession of both the muscles and we need to go into even periosteal fixation like what Rohit explained in our third knot piles. So this is some of the examples where we have done a unilateral or bilateral asymmetrical recession. This is the immediate post-op. One of the thing, when she comes after five years, you can see a slight abduction limitation, which can be increasing in this patient. This we need to counsel to this patient. So that's the conclusion in most of this of type two or type three Duane syndrome. Mostly they are type three. Exotropic is mostly are type three in our country, what we see. So that helps. And whenever there is a overshoot, most of us will do Y splitting. There are other ways as well to handle this. Uh, this is where some of the patients, as I was explaining, I do a lateral rectus uh, transposition, the superior rectus transposition to the LR and also fixation to them, uh, to the periosteum. And then you can take, uh, it's like uh, you can take care of two things in uh, one surgery. So that's where uh, we are trying to do some subset of patients that's required. And this is the post-operative uh, uh, picture of the same patient. It significantly improves the overshoot as well as significant exotropic Duane syndrome. So what is sig significant, we can uh, discuss in our discussion. Very small subset of exotropic Duane syndrome, very small, they have vertical deviation. Here, Y split helps if it is around five or six prisms. We might have to go into inferior oblique surgery or superior rectus recession. This is one of the patients where we had to do lateral rectus and superior rectus recession, which improved the horizontal deviation. The last one I'm going to touch upon, this is uh, in our experience in the last 15 years, we have seen subset of patient, their ocular motility is good. Maybe if you see carefully, they have some incompetence. They don't have significant overshoot or retraction, but they have all the features uh, when we uh, do the typical surgery, what we really do it for uh, Duane syndrome, it really corrects everything, uh, the, the abnormal head posture. It responds really to the uh, Duane syndrome. When we really looked at uh, these, uh, this is a, a series of 11 patients we have published, Duane minus, they don't have retraction. They don't have real, real clinical duction limitation. When you do incompetence, yes, they do have this incompetence. They, they, they can have this uh, partial agenesis of this nose. That's possible. That's uh, entity we call it as Duan minus. It really responds to the typical surgery, what you do for uh, these patients. So I show this picture. Upma, I think uh, for some of our foreign faculty, you don't know. This is one of the most common uh, breakfast item we have in India. There are hundred ways of uh, doing it, uh, you know. Uh, some people put some of the nuts. It's all depends upon availability. We need to look at in this uh, Duane syndrome, you need to look at what are the available things, what you can see. And each patient is different. 
Here, each state can be different. Each house can be different when it comes to upma. So that way, I think really it applies. And this is the summary slide of my last slide. Uh, it gives that upma kind of thing. What are the recipes when you have, you know, isotropic, exotropic, orthotropic? This is the standard classification what you should have. And once you have it, how do you do when you do uh, superior rectus transposition or periosteal? We have given that small little notes. This can really help. I'm not going to really explain everything. It's, a, it's I think it's self-explanatory. Thank you so much uh, for everyone for this, uh, uh, you know, attention. In the evening, we have a Strabismus Hall of Fame. If you are interested, you can join us. Thank you so much. Ramesh, thank you. Thank you very much, Ramesh. Uh, can we ask uh, some questions, Dr. Frank? Yes, yes, we can ask a question if we got time. Yeah, that Upma was uh, mouth watering actually. <laughs> uh, uh, Ramesh, actually, how you deal with the uh, near distance disparity in patients with uh, exoduans? Like you get more of uh, exo for near and less of exo for distance. Then how you deal with those patients? Yeah, uh, near distance disparity is, uh, I, I would say it's pretty common in uh, type 3. And sometimes type 2 is quite rare. Type 3 generally depends upon the severity. Again, if, if there is no retraction, uh, Shashikan, if there is not too much of retraction, I try to do a small resection. Dr. Kraft from Toronto, he has a paper on that. But generally, I do a asymmetrical resection. So that's what I, I, I try to do, uh, Shashikan. Generally, I do a lateral actress resection. It takes care of it. Even in uh, intermittent exotropia, we have that experience, right? It's not that we have to do a bilateral medial rectus resection in all the cases. Many of the patients, both the things can be uh, managed with this uh, symmetrical or asymmetrical resection. Thank you very much, Ramesh. I will move on.